Today I have with me a very interesting book called Physics Demystified by Stan Jabalisco. If you open this book or any physics textbook to the chapter on waves and wave phenomena, you may notice a couple interesting things. The first being the obvious prevalence of sine waves. But the second and far more intriguing being the mention of harmonics. And maybe even a diagram like the one on the left or a graph like the one on the right. So what is going on here and why is it so important to physics? Well, the answer is the Fourier transform. So what is the Fourier transform? Well, the Fourier transform was invented by a French mathematician named Joseph Fourier. And it is essentially a way of expanding some function that is this chaotic waveform that we can't understand into a sum of sines and cosines that we can deal with easily. And it is incredibly useful and relevant throughout a lot of physics and higher mathematics. However, there's a major distinction between Fourier series and Fourier transform. And we'll learn both, but we'll begin the story by learning about Fourier series. So there are several formulas associated with this. So if we have the function f of t that we're expanding into a Fourier series, then this will be the formula. 1 half a naught plus sigma from n equals 1 to infinity of a sub n times cosine of n omega t plus b sub n times sine of n omega t. Okay, that's a lot, so let's break it down. First of all, we'll start with a naught. A naught is just a constant that we're adding to this whole sum, and it tells us how high above or below the t-axis our waveform is, the average of our waveform. So then a sub n and b sub n are the coefficients of the cosine and sine, and they have separate formulas to find them that I'll show in just a moment. And omega is the frequency of each sine or cosine wave. Okay, so what is the formula for a sub n and b sub n? Well, a sub n equals 2 over capital T, where capital T is the period of our of our waveform times integral from 0 to t so we're integrating over the length of the entire period of f of t times cosine since this is the cosine coefficient cosine of n omega t dt b sub n is very similar only with a sine instead of a cosine so b sub n equals 2 over capital T times integral from 0 to capital T of f of t times sine of n omega t dt. If you open our physics textbook to the chapter on AC power, you'll notice that AC power output comes in several very interesting waveforms, including the square wave shown here. or the sawtooth wave, like the fast rise slow decay, or the slow rise fast decay. So let's do an example with the square wave. For the sake of simplicity, we'll make its period 2 pi, and it'll go up all the way to 1 and down to negative 1, like a real sine wave. So since we'll be integrating this function, we have to define it. And the best way to do that is to make it a kind of piecewise. And the only place we have to worry about is this segment here that we'll be integrating over. So we only have to define it for that segment. So on that segment, it'll be one if t is between zero and pi, and it'll be negative one 
if t is between pi and 2 pi. So now let's figure out our coefficients, starting with a naught. We can see that the square wave is 1 half the time, and it's negative 1 half the time. So those cancel each other out, and it turns out that the average of the square wave is just 0, and the average therefore sits on the t-axis. So a naught is 0. So now we can move on to a sub n and b sub n. So a sub n will equal 2 over 2 pi or 1 over pi times the integral from 0 to 2 pi of f of t times cosine of n omega t dt. And the key here is that we can split this integral up into two parts because of this piecewise. So in the first part from zero to pi, it'll equal to one. So we can just put cosine of n omega t. And in the second case, it'll equal to negative one. So negative cosine of n omega t dt. And this will be from pi to two pi. And to tidy things up a bit, we can bring this negative sign out to here. All right, so we can do a similar thing with b sub n. Let's figure out our frequency. This has the same period as a normal sine wave. It'll also have the same omega as a normal sine wave, which will be one. So this means that we can get rid of the omega everywhere because it's just one. So the next step would be to actually integrate these. So a sub n will become sine of n t over n because the n is not an integration variable so we have to divide by it and this is from 0 to pi and of course we can't forget to multiply by the 1 over pi that'll just go down here and then from this we'll subtract a similar story sine of n t over n pi but from pi to 2 pi. And we'll repeat the process for b sub n. All right, so now let's start opening this up. So for the a sub n, It'll start out with sine of n pi over n pi minus sine of zero over n pi. And there's more, but let's pause and just take a look at this. Sine of any multiple of pi will always be zero, and sine of zero will always be zero. And notice that here they are all multiples of pi or zero so a sub n will always be zero and there are just no cosines in our expansion so we can safely get rid of this so now moving on to b sub n so we'll have negative cosine of n pi over n pi minus negative cosine or plus cosine of zero over n pi. Then to this we'll add because the negative cosine and the minus here canceled out so it's adding plus cosine of n times two pi over n pi 
minus cosine of n pi over n pi. All right, so let's start figuring out what these will equal to. So, negative cosine of n pi is tricky because the cosine of an even multiple of pi will equal to 1. And the cosine of an odd multiple of pi will equal to negative 1. And this flips for the negative cosine. So, the negative cosine of an even multiple of pi will be negative 1. And the negative cosine of an odd multiple of pi will be 1. So, this has two cases. It'll be negative 1 over n pi or 1 over n pi. This is even. This is odd. And there's a similar thing for this negative cosine over n pi. As to cosine of 0, of course, that is 1. So it'll be 1 over n pi plus cosine of n times 2 pi. Because of that 2, this will always be an even multiple of pi. And the cosine of an even multiple of pi is just 1. So it'll also be 1 over n pi. So let's first consider the case of the evens. So in the case of the evens, we'll have negative 1 over n pi plus 1 over n pi plus 1 over n pi minus 1 over n pi. So you can see that these will cancel and these will cancel, leaving 0. So in the case that it's even, b sub n will equal to 0. And we can ignore that case. But in the odd case, it'll be 1 over n pi plus 1 over n pi plus 1 over n pi plus 1 over n pi, which equals to 4 over n pi. So b sub n has two cases. If it's even, it'll equal to 0. But if it's odd, it'll equal to 4 over n pi. So the most elegant way to express these two cases would be maybe to use the mod function. So mod n2, and then we'll multiply that by 4 over n pi. So if n is odd, the result of this will be 1, and 4 over n pi will stand unchanged. But if n is even, then this will be 0, and so the whole thing will equal to 0. So finally, let's write out our expansion. So f of t will equal to sigma from n equals 1 to infinity of mod n2 times 4 over n pi times sine of n t. And thus, we have used the Fourier series to write the square wave using a sum of signs. Here on the graph, we have our formula that we have derived using Fourier series. And here we have the upper bound, which we can change using the slider. Currently, the upper bound is just 1, so it's just the sine wave. But notice what happens when we make it greater. The sum of signs gets closer and closer and closer to the shape of the square wave. Isn't that incredible? And theoretically, if we were to have an infinite sum, if the upper bound was infinite, then we would have a perfect square wave shape. And this is the true magic of the Fourier series. You can take any strange, hard to understand waveform and turn it into a sum of sines and cosines. Also, at the beginning of this video, we found ourselves puzzled by harmonics and how they relate to physics. Well, stay tuned, because this is only the beginning of our exploration of the Fourier series. 
In later episodes, we will learn how important and ubiquitous the Fourier series is in physics and how we can apply it to our lives. So thank you so much for watching. Please apply a force vector to the like and subscribe buttons. See you next time.